Welcome to CSE Guru. In this session, we will solve a gate problem in operating systems. The topic is process scheduling. The problem is, consider the following four process with arrival time and their length of CPU burst time given in milliseconds. There are four process with respective arrival time and CPU burst time. But for the process P4, the CPU burst time is given as Z. So, we need to find the CPU burst time for process P4. These processes are run on a single processor using pre-emptive shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm. If the average waiting time of the process is 1 millisecond, then the value of Z is. So, here they have given the average waiting time of the processes and we need to find the CPU burst time for process P4 using preemptive shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm that is SRTF algorithm. Now we will solve the problem. The shortest remaining time first algorithm is nothing but preemptive SJF algorithm. The SJF algorithm is nothing but shortest job first algorithm. In this algorithm, which process is having the least CPU burst time, that process will be assigned to the CPU for execution first. The SRTF is nothing but the preemptive SJF algorithm. In this algorithm, during execution, if any new process enters into the ready queue with the least CPU burst time, the ongoing process, that is the executing process with the CPU, will be preempted. And the process with the least CPU burst time will be assigned to the CPU for execution. Since the process is preempted without completing its execution time, this concept is called preemption. The SJF algorithm with this preemption concept is called the SRTF algorithm. Now we will solve the problem based on SRTF algorithm. So here, if you are considering, there are four processes with arrival time and the CPU burst time. If you are considering process P1, arrival time is 0 and the CPU burst time is 3. So, at the time of 0 millisecond, only process P1 will be available in the ready queue. So, process P1 will be assigned to the CPU for execution. In preemption concept, whenever a new process enters into the ready queue, the scheduler will compare the remaining execution time of the ongoing process with the burst time of the newly entered process. Whichever process is having the least CPU burst time and that process will be allowed to execute with the CPU. So here the process P1 will execute with the CPU until a new process enters into the ready queue. So at the time of 1 millisecond, new process P2 enters into the ready queue. So process P1 will execute with the CPU until 1 millisecond. So at the time of 1 millisecond, process P2 enters into the ready queue with CPU burst time 1 millisecond and the process P1 remaining CPU burst time is 2 millisecond. So if you are considering process P2 is having the least CPU burst time, so process P1 will be preempted from its execution and process P2 will be assigned to the CPU for execution. And process P2 also will execute with the CPU until a new process enters into the ready queue. Also, if you are considering here, the burst time of process P2 is only 1 millisecond. But a new process enters into the ready queue at 3 millisecond. So, by that time, the process P2 will complete its execution. So, now process P2 completes its execution and it will leave the ready queue at the time 2 millisecond. So at the time of 2 millisecond, process P3 has not yet entered into the ready queue. So only process P1 will be available. So now process P1 will be executed with the CPU for another 1 millisecond. So at the time of 3 millisecond, process P1 with the remaining execution time 1 millisecond and process P3 with the CPU burst time 3 millisecond. Whichever is lesser, that will be assigned to the CPU for execution. So obviously process P1, so process P1 will be assigned to the CPU for execution until 4 millisecond. At the time of 4 millisecond, process P1 completed its execution and it will leave the ready queue. Now at the time of 4 millisecond, process P3 and P4 will be available in the ready queue. Since we doesn't know the burst time of process P4, 
first we will assign process P3 to execute with the CPU. So in this case we will consider process P3 is having the least CPU burst time and we will allow process P3 to execute first. So process P3 will execute for 3 milliseconds. So that is 7 milliseconds. Now process P4 will be assigned to the CPU. There is no more process in the ready queue. Process P4 is the only process. So now process P4 will be assigned to the CPU for execution. And we don't know the CPU burst time of process P4. So we will consider it as the completion time of process P3 plus Z. So that is nothing but 7 plus Z. So here if you are considering the process P1 and P2 completes its execution before process P4 enters into the ready queue. So obviously process P1 and P2 will be executed first. So next option if you are considering process P3 and P4 are the only two process in the ready queue. So if you want to find the CPU burst time, we can consider either process P3 will execute first if the CPU burst time of process P3 is lesser. Suppose if process P4 CPU burst time is lesser means P4 will execute first. So here this we will consider it as case 1. In case 1 we will allow process P3 will execute first and case 2 we will allow P4 to execute first and then P3 to execute. So in both the cases, we will try to find out the CPU burst time of process P4. Now all the process has completed its execution with the CPU. Now we need to find the completion time of each process. So completion time is nothing but the process when it completes its execution with the CPU. So process P1 if you are considering completion time is nothing but 4 milliseconds. Process P2 it is 2. Process P3 it is 7 and process P4 it is 7 plus Z. Next we need to find the turnaround time. Turnaround time is nothing but completion time minus arrival time. So for process P1 4 minus 0. Process P2 it is 2 minus 1. Process P3 it is 7 minus 3. And process P4 it is 7 plus Z minus 4. So we will get it as 3 plus Z. Next, we need to find the waiting time. So, waiting time is nothing but turnaround time minus burst time. So, turnaround time is 4 and the burst time is nothing but 3. So, 4 minus 3 it is 1 and for process P2 it is 1 minus 1, 0. Process P3 it is 4 minus 3 and process P4 it is 3 plus Z minus Z. So, it is 3. And in the problem itself, they have, they have given the average waiting time is nothing but 1 milliseconds. So here if you are finding the average waiting time of these process, we need to get 1 milliseconds. Then this case is correct. So here if you are considering it is, so the average waiting time is nothing but 5. And the total number of process is nothing but 4. Here if you are considering the average waiting time will be 1.25 we will get. But we have to get the average waiting time should be 1 millisecond. Now we will go for case 2. That is in case 2 we will try to execute P4 first and then P3. So now process P1 and P2 will execute first itself. Before P4 enters into the ready queue itself process P1 and P2 will complete its execution. In case 2 we will allow the process P4 to execute first and then P3 to execute and then we will check the value. So now process P4 will execute first. Since the CPU burst time of process P4 is Z, it is nothing but 4 plus Z. And process P3 if you are considering its execution time is nothing but 3. So 4 plus Z plus 3 that is 7 plus Z. So now the completion time for process P1 is 4, process P2 it is 2, process P3 it is 7 plus Z and process P4 it is 4 plus Z. Next the turnaround time is nothing but completion time minus arrival time. So for process P1 it is 4 minus 0, process P2 2 minus 1, process P3 it is 7 plus Z minus 3. So that is 4 plus Z 
and process P4 it is 4 plus Z minus 4 that is Z. Next we need to find the waiting time. So waiting time is nothing but turnaround time minus burst time. So turnaround time is 4, burst time is 3. 4 minus 3 it is 1. For process P2 it is 1 minus 1, 0. Process P3 it is 4 plus Z minus 3 that is 1 plus Z. Process P4 it is Z minus Z. So it is 0. Next we need to find the average waiting time. So average waiting time if you are considering it is nothing but 2 plus Z. And here if you are considering if we want to get 1 millisecond average waiting time means here if you are considering total number of processes 4. So the average that is the sum of the waiting time we have to get it as 4. So in this case, we will get 1 millisecond as the average waiting time. So we have to get the sum of the waiting time should be 4 milliseconds. So then only we will get 1 millisecond. So here if you are considering 2 plus Z is equal to 4. So Z is equal to 2. So Z value should be 2. So the CPU burst time of process P4 should be 2. Then only we will get the average waiting time 1 millisecond. So the answer is Z is equal to 2. So in this case the Z value will be 2 milliseconds. So if the Z value is 2 milliseconds then only we will get the average waiting time is 1 millisecond. Thank you for watching this video.